Hey, I'm back everyone. Um, I let everything dry. I'm going to do a quick little dry brush on the uh, 40 millimeter. We've got some uh, model color uh, dark gray. We got some uh, game color somber gray. And uh, game color steel gray. And game color wolf gray. We do like four layers. And I'm going to go in first with the, uh, the dark gray. So a little bit. Using an army painter large uh, dry brush. Just kind of go in there with a heavy coat. I'm not going to worry about the base too much. All my bases are usually like a there's a graveyard earth or I use a Mississippi mud as a cheap alternative. Let me kind of hit all these rocks. That's kind of a heavy dry brush with that. Get that all washed off. Let's go in with the uh, slightly darker color now. Or slightly lighter. We're going in with the uh, somber gray. Kind of a neat little, uh, like an alien um, type of thing. Okay, and I'm back now, and uh, there's a small little break there. And I'm going in now with the uh, steel gray. See how that works. I'm just trying to go with the. Uh, Okay, let's clean that off. We're going to do a really super light dry brushing of the catch the edges. Well, I turned that pretty nice. It comes like a little alien world, and it's kind of like that, that blue-gray hue to it. Um, and I think it does, you know, I'm trying to get that focus in there. You are getting that um, slate look. It is picking up the texture of the rock. Um, I'm going to try some of the other pieces that I broke better. And I might later recommend not going so many layers, because it does kind of blend a little bit too much. But it just still does have a really good look to it. And I'll be back in a second. I'm going to try a different color range on the uh, 40 millimeter. Okay, I'm back again. We're going to do the uh, 40 millimeter now. And I'm just going to change up the color range a little bit. Doing some uh, model color burnt umber. Uh, model color English uniform. Model color beige brown. And some uh, ever popular model color Iraqi sand. We'll see how that works. And I like this piece. This is where the, the piece kind of split up a little bit. So, excuse my flying hand in front of the camera. Let's do a little bit of a, like a heavy, high, heavy dry brush of the uh, burnt umber. Oops, I think we lost a little bit of sand there, but that's okay. Oh yeah, this is going to be a good one. Definitely a heavy dry brush, wasn't that? Okay, let me uh, take this off camera a second. Get the higher dryer. Got to dry that up instantly. Okay, we'll go in with the uh, English uniform now. This has got a little bit of green in it, so I'll add a little different uh, 
uh, heat to it. Make sure I get this nice and I'm doing a dry brush, not a heavy wet brush. Yeah, that's cool. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go for the uh, beige brown. A little dip of that. Excuse the uh, camera jostle. And let's just get these edges nice. There we go. See, now we're starting to pop here. Okay, let's hit that with the hair dryer real quick. Okay, and now we're going to finish it off with a real light dry brush catching the edges with the Iraqi sand. There we go. Well, that's a cool looking little base. So we got uh, 65 and the uh, 40 going. Uh, let me get some paint set up for the uh, 25 and uh, we'll be done. Thanks. Okay, uh, we're on the last base. We're going to have some more fun with the color. Going with a khaki from Model Color, a Model Color tan yellow, a sand yellow, and a pale sand. Just kind of just changing it up a little bit, having fun. I know it's not for an army or anything. Just uh, having This is kind of fun to do once in a while, just to experiment with colors and see what you get out of it and so far uh, it looks pretty good that little blue thing alien thing that brown thing could probably be any kind of army would fit on that and we'll see how this turns out Excuse me. Okay, we're going now with the um, doo -doo -doo, the tan yellow. This is gonna look like a really bright kind of deserty base when we're done, I believe. Okay, now we go for the uh, yellow, sand yellow now. Let's get kind of lighter on that one. These are be very bright base. Clashing with something. Actually, that yellow kind of is it's not bad. Okay. This is going to lightly come in with the uh, 
pale sand and we're done. Then I'll come back and uh, I might airbrush the, ba the, the the browns with that color I usually use with my bases, the uh, either the graveyard earth or the um, Yeah, this kind of turned out pretty cool. It's like a really deserty thing. Put all this together real quick. Not too bad for a homemade um, Sculpey uh, slate. These last two pieces look really brought the slate out. Those did look good. Like I said, uh, maybe not do as many layers as I did. And I'll be checking out the uh, other batch I just uh, pulled out of the oven not too long ago. And uh, we'll be back in a bit. Thanks. Hey, I'm back again. I'm going to do the uh, edges of the bases real quick. I'm using Mississippi Mud by Americana. I know it's a cheap paint, but um, I'm going to show you what you can do with uh, that mixture of the 85% uh, water and the distilled water and 50% alcohol and 91% a little bit of stronger stuff. Got it in there ready. Got the mix going. And I might need to make some more paint, but... Um, as you can see, it is uh, kind of, you know, grabs on a little bit, but um, it's not sticking completely, so it's still a little uh, translucent on the plastic. That's what we want, so it atomizes. So let's uh, give this a try. I got the, uh, I got the Renegade out today. I'm running at 20 pounds of pressure. Let's give it a test on something. Piece of paper. I have no idea what this is, but let's see. There you go. Nice atomization. Now a little bit of you know when it first came out, but see, that's, you can't ask for better than that. I'm gonna go in on these little bases, and this, this is a highly detailed brush. I got the fine setup in it. We're just going to put little, little light layers. I might just go between each base. And I am doing well right now. The mus you know, your muscle memory develops. So you know where uh, that thing's going to point as soon as you aim it. And I, like I said, I have a lot of brushes that all kind of change up a little bit. But um, I've been using this one quite often. And see, like there, there's like nice and clean. Let that dry give another coat. Let's go on the 40 millimeter. See nice and tight on there. I probably got about a uh, three quarters of an inch space between me and the uh, material I'm painting. This is almost, this uh, Mississippi mud actually goes, kind of doesn't contrast with this base very much, but that's okay. Okay, and then we go, we're gonna come back to that one again. This is the, I really like how this one turned out, it's kind of fun. Some kind of maybe like a moon or something like that, or some kind of mining planet. There's a lot of real estate to cover on this one, but I remember we're using a cheap craft store paint right now, and it's sticking on nicely. Also, if you use a good primer, you can almost throw anything on it. A nice smooth coat. It's gonna look beautiful. No brush strokes. This is what the, the nicest brush out right now. Everyone's using it. All the cool kids are using it, I guess. And you always want to keep maybe check on your uh, make sure you got some spray going. So you never know when you're spraying over the same area over and over again with these light coats. You don't know if you're getting paint or not. And like I said, I lube my needles. That might not be necessary. A lot of people say it's, you know, they're uh, Teflon coated needles. You don't need any lube. But I've noticed it saves you from the tip dry tremendously. I don't know you can see my tip. There's nothing built up on it at all. And remember, running 
Scrap each crap paper for this thing. So let's go back to that one. Nice coat on that. And let's finish this bad boy up. Perfect. And this 40 millimeters, a little couple of black areas. And uh, I'm not complaining too much about the camera in front of me this time. I uh, took off that big handle on the tripod, which I never thought of before. And oh, it's, I'm getting you know good, uh, probably six inches closer to the back of the camera. I'm probably boring you with this right now, but this is kind of fun to do and just to show you, uh, you know, practice. I haven't been using airbrush very long. I owned one as a child, uh, like probably 12 years old. My dad bought me a Badger, and that's uh, I'm gonna be 44 in a few days. A long time ago. Um, he was good with it. My dad's a natural artist. I might have a little bit of that picked up from him. But that thing intimidated me. Never used. Uh, when we moved, it ended up going to being donated. And then uh, about a year ago, I started buying airbrushes again. Well, there we go. A little hair on there. We got uh, three great bases complete. And ready to be uh, have a... Space Marine or Orc or Eldar or whatever you want on there uh, mounted. And uh, I might be back in a second. I'll take these off the base and also break apart that other uh, batch I just made. And I really appreciate you guys commenting and subscribing and liking. See you again soon. Thanks. Hey, I'm back finally. Um, there's the three bases. I just uh, tacked a little uh, Ultramarine Sergeant on here real quick. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Looks like he's uh, enjoying his little run across the slate. And I brought the other slate out. I can't really tell much difference. Looks like there's less variation in it when I fold it in on itself. And you can see on the edges here it's round. It's still um, easy to score. But it's not rock solid. And when you score it, it busts right where you want it. So that's a nice thing. It's very controllable. It's not as hard as regular slate, but look at that. That's a nice chunk that came out. Lots and lots of texture. And I just want to thank you guys again for uh, joining me. I hope uh, some people got some good ideas and, uh, and maybe put this to use and share it with your uh, buddies and uh, fellow gamers and hobbyists. And uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you again soon. I just want to bug everyone again real quick. Um, you know, I made uh, those two batches. Um, it came out with, uh, I don't know, a couple pounds. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see what we came up with. Okay, we're back. We got my uh, postage scale going. This is what we have left over after doing those two batches. We got 14.2 uh, ounces. That's a pound. It feels heavier than that for some reason. But that is a lot of slate. I mean, you could do, uh, I don't know how many more, but at least a couple hundred bases with that, maybe. Because you're not using these thick slices. And another thing, you know, with that first uh, part you saw, where I was kind of disappointed when it first came out of the oven, why well, take all that back? This stuff is really easy to work with. Let me swing it down here. As you see, it scores. You can score any direction you want. Now take it off camera, snap it. And it breaks on the score. And also, it's really cool about this. Just take this any, as I'm saying, be, being careful, watch what you're doing. And split it up and break and get really cool effects on this. I mean, this can be Red Rock Deserts, you know, in, uh, in uh, Arizona or New Mexico, something like that. It could be anything you want it to be. But uh, I think that was a really cool little thing I stumbled across and I was happy to share it with everyone. And uh, I will not bug you about it again. I will see you on the next uh, video. I'm not sure if it's a, probably more of a desk cleaning up thing. I'm still working on those def coptas. Like I said, once again, I really appreciate everyone's uh, attention and uh, comments. I love those. 
and I love being a part of the community. Thanks again.